The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline." Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning. You know, today's Gospel reading is yet another of Jesus' signs of his divinity. I'm sure that all the signs and wonders witnessed by the apostles and disciples sort of solidified their belief in Jesus. From its description, it's not too difficult for us to imagine this beautiful scene of Jesus going up on the mountain and the large crowd that was following him going up there with him. On the surface, we see Jesus becoming concerned about feeding the large crowd, and this is of no small import for Jesus. We have to remember this, who always had a preferential option for the needy. You know, that was a very big sign of God's divine mercy in him. Yet I'm sure he had all intentions of using this opportunity, as the scriptures tell us, to perform yet another sign that those who were present may come to believe. And after miraculously multiplying the five barley loaves and two fish that the boy had handed over to them into enough food to feed 5,000 men. Now we have to believe that there was also women and children with these men. It wasn't just men. So it was more than 5,000 that were fed by just the five and two. And then there was 12 wicker baskets left over. And of course, we see the crowd's reaction, and I'm assuming that all of us would probably have reacted the same way. This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world, the Messiah that they were expecting Now, if we juxtapose this with today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, all the signs Jesus performed were, among other things, 
building up the faith of his disciples because the road ahead for them would be extremely treacherous. The apostles were being pursued by the Sanhedrin in order that they may arrest, imprison, gag and silence and maybe even execute them for continuing to spread the gospel message. The very wise and well-respected elder and Pharisee, Gamaliel, warned the Sanhedrin not to mess with the disciples of Jesus. For if their activities come from God, you will not be able to destroy them, he said. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. That probably made them shake in their boots. So the Sanhedrin had them flogged instead. They were going to let them go. But oh no, they flogged them and ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus. Hmm. And we know how they paid close attention to that warning, right? <laughs> Not. It's what follows, my brothers and sisters, it's what follows that ties this witness story to all the signs Jesus performed while on earth. What follows is incredible and should be a great witness to all of us who call ourselves Christians. The scriptures tell us so. They left the presence of the Sanhedrin. This is after being flogged rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. I was reading through this a couple of days ago. It just totally amazed me yet again how someone could rejoice at being flogged, at being dishonored, When was the last time that you were ridiculed for your faith? Think about it. When was the last time an acquaintance, associate, a colleague, or even a friend or family member verbally flogged you and disparaged your faith and love for Jesus? I witnessed should probably bring that out in some people. I'm sure it's happened to you at least once in your life. The question is, did you react to this vilification like the apostles reacted, rejoicing that you had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name? I don't like that question myself because I find too often that I do not. Rather, it brings about a little bit of anger, doesn't it? So I'll leave you to ponder this saying from the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus left all of us with. After he taught the Beatitudes, he said, Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven.